Wagner mercenaries are finished. Prigozhin's threats explained. That's what we're going to talk about today, uh, about Prigozhin versus Kadyrov, and a little bit explain the situation, and also I'm doing it for documenting the war criminals, probably for future hog courts and stuff like that. And the uh, internet remembers everything, and we need to remember that too, just to make sure that next time when they're in court, they wouldn't say, oh, I didn't say that, I didn't do that. That is why I provide you uh, with information with um, English subtitles from different sources, which I will name, and I will list it in the video, in the pinned comment to this video, so you can verify it for yourself. And we will find out why it is all important, and why we should know about this. Uh, hi, I'm Elina, this is my political channel Enough. Welcome, enough of propaganda, let's talk truthfully about the war in Ukraine, which Putin started in 2014, and now we will talk about most disgusting uh, pieces of human garbage on the planet. One of them is Putin's chef, uh, chief of uh, Wagner PMC, the illegal mercenaries, which isn't even legal by Russian law, Putin's private army, basically, in Russia, which call themselves a private mercenary company. We will a little bit look into what is behind the scenes, and we will hear what Prigozhin himself has to say. So, this goblin, and I'm not talking about how he looks like, I'm talking about what he does. He's murdering people. He's, even his own troops. He is murdered by sledgehammer. He ran in troll factories who were guilty of interfering in elections in several countries, including United States, for example. And he admitting it. He pre, uh, he uh, basically saying exactly yes, we did interfere and we will interfere. And what are you gonna do about it? So let's see what he has to say. And. Um, if you seen this on other sources, you can skip that. And then I will explain what is important in his speeches and what we should look for and uh, what it is all about. Парни, ЧВК Вагнер, которые погибли сегодня, еще кровь свежая. I'm not issue warnings for this video because nothing you can see in it of that. Basically, there are corpses, a lot of corpses of PMC Wagner troops. Many of these people were taken out of Russian prisons. Prigozhin flew there by helicopter and just took them out. Imagine that. Criminals who committed several murders were put in jail by the court. And he just show up and offer them, how about I'll give you guns and you'll go fight for me in Ukraine? Apparently, it was done by secret order of Putin, a uh, secret pardon. So he pardoned these people before they even do anything for Russia, like fighting in Ukraine, in a useless, senseless war. It doesn't matter that these people are criminals. They were paying their debt to society in jail. Prigozhin took them out of it. And now he released, uh, he would release them after six months if they will survive. These people obviously didn't. Because he used them in the meat grinder, like a cheap meat, to throw in the meat grinder. With rusty machine guns running ahead of... Towards tanks and high mars and stuff like that. And now they're dead. Or the great commander. He forbid people from his own troops to help the wounded. Until they said, like, uh, the end of the day. Of the battle. Then they might come back and see for wounded. Many of them were just dumped. I just seen one of them crying on the Mr. Zolkin's channel. That he was abandoned and wounded. I was trying, I was kind of thinking about making making this video kind of like a joke about it, but I can't joke about it. These are people. They were a re real, alive people, and now they're dead. They are criminals. Many of them war criminals. They committed multiple war crimes. and But they deserve to be on the in court. Сними всех. 
don't seem like a lot of them. This is Times report. А теперь слушайте меня, сука, блядь. Это чьи-то, блядь, отцы. И чьи-то сыновья. И те, блядь, которые не дают нам боеприпасы, сука, будут в аду жрать их потроха, блядь. У нас нехватка боеприпасов 70%. Шойгу, Герасимов, где, блядь, боеприпасы? He is talking in that kind of manner to Russian Minister of Defense Sergei Shoigu and Gerasimov, the military commander of the whole thing, the general staff commander. So, former criminal, he will serve time in jail as well. So, uh, right now, basically a bandit who giving guns and ammunition and planes, trains and everything, whatever you can only wish for. No one private mercenary company has that kind of stuff. The kind of privileged part of Russian army. And now that's what he's saying to the military commander of, commanders of Russian army. Посмотрите на них, Если вы даете норму боеприпасов. So basically he's saying that many of them would have been alive if they would give them ammunition, which isn't true. And we will talk about it today. Uh, the situation is, being such a privileged as it is group of Russian, in Russian, kind of kind of like Russian army, they're not private. They get planes, they get stuff which normal private companies doesn't have, they can't afford. The worst of it, they get in ammunition and everything ahead of Russian army. So first, Prigozhin gets what he needs, and then everybody else. He got way more munitions or anything than other Russian troops. And uh, we will, I'll show you a little bit of more about that in a minute. And I will show you a, a little piece of this speech, and I'll give you the link so you can watch it all if you like. And I will point out a couple inconsistencies. This is uh, basically Prigozhin wrote a letter to the Ministry of Defense saying that they don't have enough munitions and they have to be removed from Bakhmut because they're not gonna die. They don't want they don't want to die and uh, for no reason and which is they are there for no reason. Uh, let's listen a little bit of this and then I explain a little bit more. Когда? СВО пошло не по плану, нас попросили помочь. So, right now he's committing crime by Russian law. And not only I'm not even speaking that being a chief of mercenary group which is illegal by Russian law. Uh, it's a little bit wrong date here, he said 16th of March. Then special military operation of Putin apparently didn't go according to the plan. And the Wagner were asked for help. Uh, to help the Russian army. Because apparently, Putin's little war doesn't go in according to plan. So this is the, the, the sentence in jail right there. Next. 19 марта 22 года подразделения прибыли из Африки, полностью экипированные и сразу с колес вступили в бой. Мы вошли в самое тяжелое место, в центр укреп района по опасной. И к 9 мая 22 года овладели населенным пунктом. Затем, для того, чтобы спасти армию, которая бежала позорно из изюма и Красного Лимана, заняли линию фронта более 130 километров и сдержали натиск противника. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. So, he, uh, Red Liman, Krasny Liman, he's talking about it's just Liman in Ukrainian. Like, Russians call it differently, as well as they call Bakhmut Artemovsk. Uh, the point is that he is claiming that they did so much for Russian army and whining about it. The point is, he's doing exactly the same thing as they did before. When Russian army was running away 
from Liman, from uh, Izum, and so on. Uh, Putin, at the same day, was having a speech and a party about uniting, uh, about accepting new lands into, Russian, into Russia. And Russian troops, in those places he just named, were dying under the fire and getting killed because they had to stand stand one day longer so it didn't spoil Putin's speech. How many of them dead there? And let's see what Prigozhin is doing himself. Now he's talking about October 2022 and then they save in Russian army and they start Operation Bakhmut meat grinder. So he is himself telling it, yes, we do throw in our people into meat grinder. Now Prigozhin is claiming that just because they were so successful, yeah, throwing people by bunches, like logs into the fire, without counting even them. And now he's complaining that uh, Ministry of Defense now kind of feel jealous from uh, envy. And that's why they stopped giving them ammunition and everything and so on. And that's why they put so-called artificial shell hunger. And freely, which is freely available in stockpiles. He's lying right there because um, I have an information, and partly also Michael Naki was mentioning that also. In uh, I'll show you a little bit later in um, from Popular Politics that they are privileged. They used to throw ammunition and people like there is no tomorrow, and. It's not just that. They, um, they're getting more ammunition from Russian army than everybody else. And now they started to get less more as much as everybody else. But even that wasn't enough. Uh, in the end of the video, I'll show you how Prigozhin going in roundabout ways through some corrupt military officials uh, and buying the munitions from other units of Russian army. And then other... Units dying and then Prigozhin get more munitions than them because he bought it from them. Десятого мая двадцать третьего года мы выходим из населенного пункта Бахмут. А, и надо, basically, basically his full speech is full of reasons. For in, in the mind of Putin and Russian uh, nowadays laws to put him in jail. First of all, Russians doesn't call Bakhmut Bakhmut. They call it Artemovsk. Second of all, right there is the proof that they only wanted to leave Bakhmut uh, from May 10th. And today is not May 10th. Today is May 6th in Canada anyways. Um, why he have to stick around? For that long and wait because my May 9th is Russian military day parade. It's a big deal which Putin created even bigger deal. The victory in World War II is one thing, but Putin turned this into something absolutely disgusting. Uh, I remember my time in USSR where we were told that never again, the war was horrible, we should do everything possible to never have the war again. And Putin in 20 something years in power twisted mind of Russian people that much that now for them uh, we can repeat it. From never again and switch to we can repeat it. I have the uh, last year I did a video on, on that, about that day. You can watch it. But the point is he's such a great commander. He's so worried about his troops. But yet he gonna do exactly the same thing what people Russian army did in Liman. They had to hold for extra day, get lots of people killed, just because Putin need to have his little party. And now Putin need to have his little party on May Day Parade, nine Victory Day Parade. That is why Prigozhin's people gonna die in Ukraine for another several days. And he's not gonna... I personally thought that he might not withdraw, but apparently that's not the case which we will find out. And another thing. If do you petty jealousy, you don't want to gift victory of taking Bakhmut to the Russians, this is your problem that he's telling to military commanders of Russia. Boy, oh boy, that war was not necessary whatsoever for Russians at all. And now all they could have a victory of a little tiny town Bakhmut. 
somewhere nowhere in Ukraine, which Russia was not needed. It's absolutely useless, senseless war. Putin started out of his ego for no other reasons. And then, and now Prigozhin trying to portray himself like such a hero. And yes, as I told you before in the videos about Prigozhin, that yeah, there is some conflict between him and uh, uh, army commanders and stuff like that. Because they don't consider him as equal, as I told you. They consider him as a criminal out of jail. He's not equal to them. They're never going to give him any power. And as I said, his days are numbered. While he's still necessary to eliminate some Russian politicians for Putin, or kill lots of people and just uh, pretending he can have victory in Bakhmut, uh, that is why he's still alive. But mercenaries of his group and him himself are done. And we will see it soon enough. And why he also want to withdraw from Bakhmut? Because he knows he cannot take it. He said it's just two kilometers, two square kilometers left out of 45. And we could have done it. They know they can't. That is why he's doing that speech. One reason is, is that, that he doesn't want the failure and the Bakhmut, in Bakhmut, be associated with him and his mercenary groups group. Because they would be a failure. In eight months they couldn't take Bakhmut, they're gonna fail. And then they're gonna fail, and this would be associated with him. Now if he would leave, it wouldn't. And number two, when he posting all these videos and asking about and demanding ammunition and this and that, if he could have, if he been in favor with Putin, he could have walked in and talked to Putin. He can't. That is why he have to make those videos to portray himself and at least make his voice heard because he knows he isn't necessary anymore. He has no how how to win a little bit of me a few meters of land. Now Russian army is doing. Now Russian army doing the same thing. They're trying to put prisoners unsuccessfully, by the way, to the front like he, da he did. And now Russian army saying, okay, make mercenary group as part of Russian army. So give up your group, become part of Russian army, and you won't have problems with the ammunition. Дневной, тяжелой работы. И в этих тыловых лагерях будем ждать, когда мы снова потребуемся народу России. I hope never. I hope people of Russia would never see necessity or anything to do with these bandits and murderers of Prigozhin's PMC Wagner. And now Putin's uh, Putin is playing two of his puppets against each other. So now uh, this is Ramazan Kadyrov. He is uh, a leader of Chechnya. Republic Putin drowned in blood and destroyed for over a decade, pounding their cities into the ground and now using their people to fight the war in Ukraine. But again, Kadyrov famous as TikTok warrior in his uh, troops, a laughing stock for the West, but in Russia they mean something. Because they do kidnappings of people and they only can intimidate people who are weaker than them and so on. So Kadyrov said, okay, if Prigozhin is leaving, the Kadyrov and Chechens will help. That's what he has to say. We must win. Why? We didn't need this war in the first place. And victory? What victory? Over whom? Over that teeny tiny town? Which isn't important in strategically in any way? In the war which wasn't necessary whatsoever? Aggressive war which is again against Russian law? So this is another war criminal, so I showed you at least two of them right now, and a whole bunch of on the picture with Prigozhin. Everybody who is in the Wagner group are war criminals. Period. By Russian law, by independent international law, and so is Kadyrov. So basically Kadyrov said, okay, I'll save you. I'll bring my troops in there. Don't, don't. 
Ты оставишь, что он, что твой брат, да он, младший брат Рамзан Кадыров заменит тебя, да он. Мы не должны просто так отдавать то, что э, большими потерями было, да он, захвачено, да он, большинство, да он, территории Бахмута. Да. So Prigozhin and Kadyrov are war criminals, and that's what Prigozhin is also saying, that uh, he's screaming at Russian authorities, and basically he's talking to Putin. It's not just Shaigu, it's not just Gerasimov. He talks to Putin, and he and he also um, was screaming about that uh, their children is uh, having YouTube channels and having fun there. He's implying to the son of Shaigu, who has a YouTube channel and he's blogging about Oh, something not about the war. So none of the Russian leaders have their children at war. And that's the point of um, Prigozhin is making. Except he was saying that the son of Dmitry Peskov, Russian spokesman, uh, were, uh, he was in uh, Prigozhin's uh, army, like a regular, regular soldier and so on. Uh, which isn't true either. So basically Putin and Russian leaders want Russian people to die, and most of them, not even ethnically Russians, they ethnically cleansing uh, people on the north, different people from Tuva, from Dagestan, and so on, and Prigozhin and Kadyrov murdering people, as they did before, in 2014 Prigozhin did it, he did it in Africa, and he's still doing it in Africa, and now they try to, uh, he tries to basically be more important and demanding some attention from Putin. And Putin doesn't like to be threatened. He doesn't like to be blackmailed. That is why another reason why Prigozhin Day is unnumbered. This is politologist Michael Naki. He had an interview to uh, Popular Politics. He was saying more about Prigozhin situation and also saying that uh, there was a some business going on between Prigozhin and uh, Mizintsev uh, general, and that's why the uh, Mizintsev was removed, because they doing um, some shady businesses, uh, Prigozhin buying uh, munitions from Russian army, and people who is fighting in Ukraine basically get way less munition, because Prigozhin bought it from them and in corruption uh, schemes and so on. Uh, this man Mizintsev, he was a deputy of Shaigu, deputy of Minister of Defense, and he was helping Prigozhin to get those munitions uh, to buy it in a shady way from the other uh, units. And here is Prigozhin talking about that Mizintsev and saying that how what a great guy he is and how uh, Wagner Group was treating uh, ammunition, they trying to preserve anything, and that that man was trying to make sure that uh, it wasn't overused muni of munitions, the people and army was using it uh, kind of in very economical way and so on. So basically supporting him and saying, of course, if they did business together, and I can't guarantee about this part, but I watched Michael Naki for quite some time, and I think he knows what he's talking about, so I had, no, I kind of trust him on that, but you're welcome to investigate it on your own, I did not investigate this part. This is from Warthog Defense, um, this is the letter which uh, Evgeny Prigozhin, uh, chief of Wagner PMC, wrote to Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, uh, to General uh, Shaigu, and that's what he is saying, that uh, because of the long uh, hunger of um, ammunition, receiving 32% from amount we asked since October 2022 of uh, artillery shells and so on, and we lost our military potential, and according to the chief of Chechen Republic, hero of Russia apparently, Ramazan Kadyrov, and hero of uh, those so-called LNR and DNR, General Colonel Kadyrov, and he agreed to exchange, uh, to switch places with PMC Wagner, and uh, his uh, Spetsnaz Ahmad will gonna take the Wagner's place in Bakhmut. So uh, he's asking to basically um, give an order to retreat. 
And this is last uh, piece from Warthog Defense when uh, Prigozhin, thank you, Ramazan Akhmatovich Kadyrov, that's his name and patronymic name, his surname is Kadyrov, that Chechen leader, for the agreement to exchange uh, places with uh, PMC Wagner. Ramazan Akhmatovich, for the fact that he agreed, having, likely, all the возможности для получения всего необходимого и имея все необходимые ресурсы встать в бахмут на наши позиции я уже связываюсь с его представителями чтобы передачу позиций начать осуществлять незамедлительно so it seems like they couldn't convince Prigozhin to stay so maybe Kadyrov will change him so uh, Ukrainians could be happy the TikTok warriors who doesn't know how to fight will gonna show up and uh, switch places with the trained killers and mercenaries who were fighting in several wars and so on. And according to Prigozhin, and I tend to agree with him, if Russians, uh, Russian front in Bakhmut will fall, it most likely the whole front will gonna fall. So uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive is coming soon. And we will see that about that. What gonna happen? Well, it's obvious that Ukraine gonna win this part of the war, I would say. Uh, as to the whole war, it is hard to say because, in my opinion, the first stage of the war will be finished when Ukraine clear up all the Ukrainian territories in the borders of 1991, include Crimea and all the so-called Donetsk People Republic, Lugansk People Republic, and all that newly stolen from Ukraine territories. And we need to help Ukraine. Russia will, wouldn't leave them alone, in my opinion, if Putin still will be alive and in power. But to me, the first stage is most important. If Ukraine will do that, a regime Putin, uh, Putin's regime will fall. That's what I believe in. And then would be a chance for Ukraine and for Russia. Please help Ukraine. Thank you for watching and have a great day.